Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number, episode number 814, and it's a sort of continuation of yesterday's talk, which basically is, how do you deal with life? Do you react, or do you respond? <laughs> it sounds so simple, either or. But I think I might have to explain a few things. So before I jump into the topic and give you some orientation, navigation, and some tips, thinking in GPS terms, I guess, I don't know why. Let me, let me introduce myself, please. Well, it's my talk. I can do that anytime I want. But I'm going to introduce myself and let you know why I do these talks and what they're about. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby, which you probably figured out if you saw my name somewhere in this broadcast. And this, by the way, is Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube later on or some other place. And I'll tell you more about that at the back end of the broadcast. Stay tuned for that. I am an inspirational speaker and love and relationships expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a spiritual teacher. That's becoming more of my front door presentation because there's no point hiding anymore which is what this talk's more about I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine which is what led me to do the work with women I do and also what led to these talks starting over two and a half years ago called messages from the masculine to inspire your feminine heart um, this is episode number 814 as I mentioned I think it is episode number 814 by the way I'm also the author of the best-selling book 50 ways to love your lover just so I can put that, that on the table um, book for men and women, couples and singles, for better relationships, to make your life better personally and in couples. And this is kind of the extension of that. Today's topic is, how do you deal with life? Do you react or do you respond? And it may sound so simplistic and you go, oh yeah, I know which one I am. Are you really? Because you might say, well, I'm very, very, I'm very aware, very awake, and so I, I respond to everything. Maybe, maybe not. And I'm going to break this down for you so you have that reference point. And also, Again, as I mentioned, orientation and navigation to give you both where you are and how you can move forward from that place because I'm all about the giving. <laughs> and this is kind of the key. So, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm deciding if I want to do a story first or explain the, the difference between the two. I'll do both. Um, this happened earlier today, just as another little nudge in the direction. Um, I was sending out an email out to my email list about my new offering and decided to put a PayPal link in the email. And it kept going sideways. Every time I sent, I did a test email, and of course I didn't realize I didn't check it until after I sent it, which is even more of a oops. But I was testing, I checked when I got the email from the server to my address, because I have a backup to make sure it comes through clear. And I clicked on the link for PayPal and it says, and went to a 404 page, like not found. I'm like, Oh dear, because initially it was kind of going, because frankly, I want to be able to go through with a smooth experience. Well, after doing a little digging and talking to the support people, it turns out my email list manager people don't do PayPal links because people apparently spoof them, do all sorts of things with them, so they don't allow PayPal to work. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting, because the thing is, why I'm saying that is because in past experiences, <laughs> I might have been less interesting and more like, oh shit, because that would have been kind of an opportunity because I had some things depending upon this. So what I ended up doing was resending the email with a note to contact me directly because the link doesn't work. But it was I was laughing most of the time. I, I said in the email, like, you know, uh, of course I'm chuckling about this because it was one of those points of going, I can respond, I can react. And the thing was, the reaction would have got nothing done because there was no changing what they did. The way they set up is the way it's working. I just didn't know this. But in terms of, instead of reacting, getting upset, maybe getting hot under the collar, raising my, my blood pressure a few more degrees, I just like, hmm, what, do I do? What, should I do? what should I do about that? And that's the thing about response. It's a proactive thing. And that's why I talk about reaction versus respond, because response is the proactive versus the reaction, because those two are very different. And most of us, to be totally transparent, spend more time in the reactivity state than we do in the responding state, uh, especially if you drive on the freeways in LA. It's, <laughs> I was talking to my friend last night, we were driving up the 405, as I, met, I talked about the 405 yesterday's broadcast. We were driving up the 405 into the valley yesterday, and I said, I was talking about it in my broadcast earlier that day, about how you think you're all aware and awake and spiritually conscious, but can you handle the 405 as a, as a test of that um, loyalty to that practice? It's kind of kidding, but the reality is, I think every one of us has some sort of thing that basically will trigger us into reaction quite easily. Now, there is a there is a an old adage. Yeah, an adage. Not an, I was thinking it's going to be a. Yes, yeah, an adage, uh, basically about um, the idea that you can go up into the mountains, be a hermit, and meditate for years and be very enlightened, but can you do that in the city? 
Can you come back down off the mountain and come back into civilization? Because frankly, why I offer this new course I'm offering is because, as I called it, it's functional spiritual leadership, meaning that it's about being spiritual in everyday life with everything that happens. Bills, relationships, kids, bosses, IRS, government, etc., etc. That is all out there giving us opportunities to respond or react. So I'm asking you these questions as well because I want you to think about this for yourself because this will help you get some, some, relevant, some reference and also get you involved in the conversation. I'm being totally selfish here. I want to get you involved in the conversation because I want to hear about you as well. I've had, to be transparent, plenty of opportunities to decide between reaction and response. And the idea about, you know, when someone gets you upset, you count to 10 and breathe and then you respond. Does that really work for you? For most people, it just simply gives them a chance to think of something more articulate to say than what they were initially going to yell at the other person when they didn't think about stopping for 10 seconds. So counting to 10 isn't necessarily the solution. It can help. But what I really think about is the best way is to reorient, reorient yourself internally. Now, as I've said, I've done over 800 broadcasts. Quite a few of them have been on the theme about codependency. And I'm going to come back to the point. So I'm going around to get to the point, so bear with me. As partners in relationship, our culture tends to promote, invite, and make normal codependency. So when you're in a relationship with somebody else, you're basically hoping they'll love you more, like in Jerry Maguire, like you complete me, that mindset that he says, you know, that, that quote he says. The mindset is such that we are trained by the culture, by society, by life itself, well, not life itself, but by the human civilization, to choose relationship as a, yeah, it's codependency shocking. Thank you, Jane, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, I'm going to come back to the, the teaching, what I'm teaching from that point, but I'm talking about relationship piece first because that's one of my expert areas, of course, or one of my focus areas, I'll put it that way. So codependency is this idea that basically other people are supposed to make us happy. You know, your partner's supposed to make you feel happy, full, thrilled, etc., etc., And that's, that's kind of the normal thing. It's not healthy, it's not correct. More people do that, and that's like, no. So relationships in the work I'm doing, a lot of, I've been teaching a lot for the last few years about this, is about how you can move from codependency to interdependency, which is beans, because, because it's true, in relationship, you are autonomous and whole and complete, and your partner is as well. But there's things that your partner can do for you that you may not be able to do for yourself, or things that your partner can do for you that make it more enjoyable for yourself than doing it, doing it for yourself. And I'm not going to touch what those are. You can think about them for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> leaving that one alone. But the thing about it is, you don't. Your life doesn't depend upon that. See, the codependency is a, is basically a paradigm where your happiness is absolutely on a teeter totter that is controlled by the other person. You are in a place where what they do directly impacts your feelings of happiness, meaning that if they do something wrong, in quotes, or do something sideways, you become, well, reactive, simply put. You become antagonistic in a way because they didn't do what you, they should have done. See, the thing about codependency is it's puppetry, or I should say puppet mastery, because what happens is when you have an upset, society set up, yeah, well, basically, Every love song for the last 70 years has been about when I fall in love, they will make me happy. When I get together with them, I feel fulfilled. I feel whole. I feel complete. Without them, I die. All that sort of crap that's in songs. Well, crap. They made lots of money. But all those songs and most movies and sitcoms and, and um, so much of our society does teach us that codependency is normal. But it's not. Well, codependency is normal, but it's not right. Or it's not healthy. It's not effective. And I do have an, a tendency to want to eradicate it <laughs> as a choice on the planet because it doesn't work. So getting back to the teaching, codependency basically puts you in a reactive state because you are dependent on the other person making you happy or dependent if the other person doesn't do what you want, you get upset. You become reactive and you're literally almost like on puppet, well not literally, but figuratively on puppet strings. Like the other person is controlling your emotions. So do you really want that in a relationship? Do you want to lose that level of self-sustaining support by giving yourself something else the power over you? It does happen in a lot, of, especially in more conscious relationships, where one of the persons is a narcissist and is more manipulative. But that's another conversation, which I've done before many times. 
So we're trained by our culture, our society, to choose codependency first. I'm hoping that you'll listen to my talks and not do that. But see, the thing is, when you start choosing codependency, you become more reactive and less responsive. So getting back to the teaching I started with, this way of living life where you live in a codependent paradigm with other people puts you in a place where your self-support, your equilibrium, your sense of balance is out of your control. So again, it's out of your control. It's in their hands, which could be your bosses, could be your partner, could be your family, could be your kids, could be your teachers, could be the police department, could be the IRS, could be anything. That you set up them to have control over your feelings. Not intentionally, and you didn't say, I'm giving you permission over my, over my life. It's like, no, none of that. What it is, though, is an indication where you don't have autonomy, where you're not choosing for yourself, where you're not actually saying, I am okay as I am, and I choose to respond according to what's out there. See, the thing about and I saw this a couple of, a few days ago. I was going to come see a friend of mine about this, about authority. We tend to give authority because of what we're trained by society to certain people. Not to say you disregard it, but we take it then they have power over us, which is not true. They may have authority, but the truth is we have autonomy, which is different. It's interesting. So authority, autonomy versus reaction and, respo and response. Hmm. Exactly, Jane. Choose autonomy. So when you choose autonomy as a place where you actually honor yourself and own your space, you become more responsive to what happens in the world. Stuff happens, yes. You get you know, a car crash or somebody get, you get a parking ticket or um, you get a letter from the IRS or some other thing that is not ideal that can be somewhat painful, emotionally speaking. The same th the thing comes back to, do you respond, do you react? When you get the parking ticket on the car, do you just get upset, tear it up and throw it away? Or do you go, hmm, lesson to be learned and I don't mean to bypass it this is the other part but I talked about this yesterday about spiritual bypass actually spiritual saran wrap as Lisa Nichols calls it sometimes you think that doing the spiritual work requires that you become so aloof that you can elevate above everything and you don't care well as I mentioned during the broadcast it's nice to go in the, into the cave up in the hills and meditate and think you're a guru or a, or a hermit but you've got to come back down the city and live functionally. So how do you do that spiritual principle, that spiritual teaching, that spiritual understanding in the real world, in the physical world with other people? That's why I created, the, that's when creating, or I should say when teaching this new, new paradigm, which is, what we're calling it, is functional spiritual leadership. Because how do you live spiritually as a responsive and responsible adult, presuming you're an adult, in the world without being reactive to everything that's happening, without being, um, how can I say this? Well, some people are, em <laughs> okay, I can use that analogy. Some people, I would say, are emotional porcupines. It's like, what? Emotional porcupine, meaning that every single quill, sorry, every single emotion they have is on, like on quills around them. So they're basically in their lives, they're almost tempting somebody to just nudge, touch, brush by, hit them so they can react. Some people are wired that way. Or I should say some people choose to be wired that way, but the reality is you don't have to do that. So if you have any of your porcupine quills sticking out that somebody can tap, nudge, and otherwise that trigger you, you may want to look at that. Because being able to be in the world and not be so reactive, yes, things can happen where you need to take a stand. And this was a few days ago, I talked about this one, actually last weekend, I think. One of my teachers, a friend of mine I love dearly, talked about how if he, if he had crossed, crossed paths with Jeffrey Epstein, before he died, um, or if he had attacked his kids, like Jeffrey attacked my friend's kids, even though he's a very spiritual teacher, he's a Taoist teacher, he's a very powerful um, warrior in the work, the work I'm, I'm part of too, and I love what he does, he said he wouldn't necessarily treat him with kindness. So, and she said a lot more than that. <laughs> but my point about this is the understanding that being responsive and being spiritual doesn't mean being... Um, I say benign is not the right word, but to be complacent, to be lazy. It requires you to be very present and very aware and keep you on, in a way, vigilance because you need, to, you need if you're choosing this path, to learn how to be in the world so you can actually see what's coming. So that's the other part, by the way. Being responsive is also be, you're more aware because when you're more aware of what's around you, what's going on, when you see things coming, 
you choose to get, you choose how you respond because if you don't see what's coming, it'll hit you sideways and you'll be reactive. That's another piece, by the way. So being coming more aware of your environment, your world, your interactions, your relationships, it's almost like you'll see what's coming. Not to say you can predict it, but when something starts to show, you'll be and it's almost being um, watching things in slow motion. You'll see what's happening, and then you can choose to respond, or you can choose to react. Because again, well, not actually, you don't choose to react. You usually, forget to respond, so you end up reacting. But the understanding is that if something happens around you and you see it coming, you can see, ah, I see what's coming. I can step aside, or I can respond to it, or deal with it. But if something comes at you without you having any chance to do anything, it's like, wow, I had a, had a left field. You may tend to react more than respond. This is the dance. This is the the pathway through for this work about becoming more spiritually present in the world and being more functional in the world. And it's becoming, as I was reminded by one of my coaches a few days ago, my primary focus. Yes, I do teach about love and relationships, but it's always been, since the beginning, it's about the relationship with yourself first. Because any relationship out there is a, in one way or one form a, re a, a um, reflection of a relationship with yourself. That may sound pretty scary when you think about it. But the thing about it is when you start to learn how everything around you is a reflection back, you choose to change how you react and respond to the world. I think I've given you some food for thought, certainly something to consider because frankly this is not the easy conversation. This is something that requires you to step to another level. And it's interesting to watch people who are actually very successful in the world Relationship with self, exactly, Jane. Thank you for that. Um, the reality of living in the world is such that some people are very successful and dynamic and get things done and they make it happen in a very big way. But the truth is, they can also be extremely reactive. I know some friends, sort of friends, who are at the world um, warrior conversation. Yes, it is. True spiritual warrior in that sense. Um, being in the place where we are. Where, where people can do very well in the world, sometimes they look at themselves and go, I'm so much better than they are. That's not, that's not really spiritual either, by the way. But they also have a place where they may still have their porcupine quill sticking out. And this can be my analogy, it seems to work. Is they may like, I'm successful, I can take care of myself and get everything done, but they're still very active. I have to use the example of the resident, the occupant of the White House. As much money, power, and authority has being in the most powerful role in the world, which is a scary thought in any way, but I'm getting into politics. But somebody with that much power, the way that he reacts to taunts, to news reporters, to things that don't go his way indicates a lack of spiritual awareness and a spiritual growth. So I'm just saying that. I'm not being political. I'm just judging. <laughs> not evaluating. I'm just explaining. So the truth of this story is to recognize for yourself, where is it you get reacted to what people say? Do you have a, 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 do you have a, um, a pet peeve that never goes away? that you'd always be upset about, that you'd always be triggered by. Are you willing to let that go? And you're willing to step above it or beyond it and become more responsive to what happens? If you are, if you're looking to find your way through to be more responsive, I have something I want to tell you about. This is a selfish self-promotion, just to be clear. Um, I just sent an email to my email list two days ago, so now I'm making it public to the world. I talked about it yesterday and I'm talking about it again today. Is I'm offering now a different form of coaching than I've done. Basically, I'm taking my 25, 30, no, 35 years of spiritual growth and spiritual work and blending it with my relationship coaching to a new thing I'm calling, as I said before, functional spiritual leadership. It's something that I've been hiding from the world, but my coach said, <laughs> get out there and talk about it in a loving way. So I've been talking about this and so I'm offering it out here. I, I mean, if you're interested in finding out more about this, send me a message or put a comment below and I'll respond to you. I don't have a link to put in there right now because it's not on my website. But what I am talking about is how to be more successful, effective, and functional in the world from a responsible, resourceful, and responsive way of living. If that interests you, reach out to me and I'll talk to tell you more about it. What I'm offering right now, just so you know the framework is, I'm offering a single session coaching, um, a single private coaching session with me on this theme. So just one session first to see if you like what I'm talking about and if it fits, which you'll invest in, it's an investment, then if you like that, then we talk about how you can work together for three to six months. That's the two um, packages I'm offering. And then your investment in the first session. Yes, exactly. Functional leadership, functional spiritual leadership. Thank you, Jane. So if you want to get more information about that, message me. It is an investment to do the session. But the thing is, anything you commit to after that, that investment comes off of that price or whatever that is. So it's my gift to you in that way. Also, the self-love practice that I talk about all the time is a vital piece of the work. I'll put the link in the comments as well. 
In fact, I'm going to put two links in the comments. The, I'm going to put a link in the comments for a contact form so you can reach out to me if you don't want to go through Messenger. So you can check out what I'm talking about. And I'll also put a link in the comments for my self-love practice because self-love is one of the functional things that when you do practice self-love, you become more self-sufficient. It's actually very simple. If you practice this every day for 30 days, which is what I recommend in the, in the course, your life will change. And your ability to respond versus react will become more evident. So those two links will be in the comments. Um, if you want to reach out for support, message me over social media or put a comment below. Oh, replays. This is, by the way, is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. And today's no exception. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, shame on you. <laughs> if you haven't seen my broadcast before, first of all, I'll tell you how to find me every day and also where you can find the replays. So I do my personal, I do my broadcast on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. There should be actually somewhere around this video a um, three dot icon type thing. You tap on that, it gives you more information. One of the links in there is um, to be notified when I go live. So that'll be in the, that summer in there. It's in Facebook, so that's what it does. The replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you want to watch my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. All my archive, all my replays are archived there. Please like my page and browse there. And additionally, if you happen to like watching on YouTube, I have them also stored on my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube is my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. And all my talks are listed very close together. Actually, it's easier to see them there than it is on, on Facebook, frankly, because the layout's better. Anyway, enough of that. I hope you got something to think about. This is a teaching that I'm going to keep talking about because it's really what's about how to have a healthy life, a successful life, and a more fulfilling life. If you want help with that, I'm here to help. I thank you for watching. Um, any thoughts, questions you have, please put them below and respond when I sign off. And uh, the links will be in the comments shortly. So thank you for being with me. As always, take care of yourself as always, because I keep reminding you of that. And I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.